Um, I really love the practices that we're doing this winter retreat. And I like how they combine so well. Uh, there are many topics that are brought out in the meditation on the Buddha that lend themselves to the four establishments of mindfulness. And um, I think because many years ago, Venerable Simke and I led the meditation on the Buddha every day for two years, I've actually, it's always really been my favorite practice. I think I need the help of what to think about, and I love leading my mind through those reflections that were written in. It's been very beneficial, and any time I do that practice, it's always the same. Um, and in t terms of how these two practices, you know, share, combine, there's many topics like refuge or renunciation or, or understanding of impermanence, um, topics related to wisdom and compassion that they share. And one reflection I've been doing, I think maybe a lot to inspire myself and also to help me set my aspirations has been these combining these two parts. Um, in the commentary that helps you to lead you through the meditation on the Buddha, there's one part at the beginning where it says, Think of the qualities of infinite love, compassion, wisdom, skillful means, and other good qualities that you aspire to develop. And what would it feel like to be those qualities? And I love to stop there and, you know, just spend time with that. What would that feel like? And then the sense of the expansiveness of the mind and the peace of the mind, if you had such a wise and kind heart as it says, that reaches out impartially to work for the benefit of all beings. So spending some time with that and seeing how, what the mind does when you expand your mind that way, I find to be very beneficial. And later, a few pages later in the sadhana, it says, let go of all conceptions you have about yourself, particularly any self-denigrating thoughts and concepts of inherent existence and meditate on emptiness. And there, I think that's also very helpful to, you know, see that particular day, like, what am I reifying? How am I feeling about myself? How am I feeling about others? And just kind of like deconstruct all that and help the mind again to be more expansive. And then Combining this, this with the four establishments of mindfulness, this is definitely, these practices definitely help us to loosen our identities that we hold about who we are. And it's not like, it's a little different from the analytical meditations because your mind is just, you're just staying there with this, like you're looking at the body parts and you look at those long enough and you kind of like, I don't really see myself in there. It just comes up to your mind like, I'm not that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Or especially when you get to the fluids, like sometimes we identify with some of those, but not the other ones. And that's interesting. Like most of the things that come out of our body, we don't really see as me or mine even. We don't, we actually, they're just like gunk that comes out. But some of them we feel a little differently about, like the ones like your blood or your cerebral spinal fluid, for example. That I think I would hold on to a little bit more like... That is mine, and I want to keep that. But you can have the earwax, and you can have the other stuff, you know. So, you know, but, you know, you kind of are breaking all that down. And so that's interesting how the body parts lend themselves to the idea of not, no self. And the elements are even more like that because they're just like, you know, aspects of physical form. Like, do you think you are your solidity, you know, like? Like the jelly jar back there holds its shape because of that jar, and the, if it wasn't there, it would just like fall apart. Do you think that fact that you have cohesion is who you are? We don't even go there, so that one's, that one's not so hard to think about in terms of heat, mot mobility, the solidity, all those. Those are, no. And then the corpse, of course, no, there's no person there. We're good with that. I don't think we're thinking that. But then we get to the feelings. And those are, you know, those are a little more, hmm, these are my feelings. <laughs> and what, but what is, you know, these are like, when they say they're like water bubbles, you know, like raindrops, they make bubbles. 
and the bubbles are like gone like that. And that's how fast those feelings go. They're so transitory. They're too transitory to be who I am because they're just like, you know, come, come, go, go. But really also, what is mine about that? Something that is just like so fleeting. I mean, there's like, there's really not much to hold on to there. It's like grains of sand, like just falling through. So I think that's, you know, when you're doing that meditation sometimes, to me, it like, well, sometimes if my mind is really clear, which is not so often, but it, <laughs> it just feels like almost so impersonal. You know, all these feelings, they come, they go, they come, they go, it's this, it's that, it's mental, it's physical, it's, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like watching a little kid run around. <laughs> I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that, this pops up, this pops out. It's just, I don't know, that's nothing there to hold on to, to see is like, but now when you get to the mind, that one I think is a little harder, the clear clarity and awareness or clear and knowing. Like sometimes I felt like I am the knower. That's the one of all of them that feels the most like that could be me in there, that knower. But really, um, isn't there just knowing <laughs> or is there really a knower? I think there's just knowing. You tell, If you can show me the knower, I'd like to see it. <laughs> So, you know, we deconstruct that. And then phenomena, it's the same thing. What of these mental factors could be the person? I mean, sometimes we do feel like I am an angry person, but you don't always have anger. These, these you know, these different um, mental factors that we have, they come and go. So then, you know, just it happens sometimes when you're looking at these things that it just kind of comes to the mind like, mm, I don't really see any person in there. It loosens and it loosens the sense of the self. It loosens the sense of I, me, and mine. And that allows the mind to have this expansiveness and peace. And that's, if you contrast that with how we are when we aren't like that, like sometimes we just have this laser focus of my body is doing this, or I have these problems, or I'm anxious about this, and our mind is like, narrow and tight. And then you contrast that with what you do when you get it all, you know, more expansive. Then, for me, that's where I like to go back to this beginning thing. Like, what would it feel like? And what would you want that mind to be? What would the qualities be? And on my puja table, I keep this poem by the first Dalai Lama. And there's a couple verses in there that, that you know, this is what comes up for me. Like, my aspiration, my inspiration. He says, keeping the body humble and at peace. And that's a very helpful phrase for me because when I think about that, I don't really have an answer of what it is, but it, it's like, it's helpful to the mind. It's like the training we have in mindfulness to me that encapsulates it a little bit. And then speaking neither unpleasantly nor deceptively in keeping the mind absorbed in the spiritually beneficial. It's good for me to say that to myself because if I want to get distracted, I can, oh, let's pull this back. What is going to be spiritually beneficial here? And then he says from there, course through the Dharma Dhatu wisdom like a fish swimming in the ocean, free from the hooks of desire and attachment, which is exactly what these practices help us to do. You know, we become much less attached when all we're going to have is a corpse in the end. Not much to get, you know, excited about that. And then another thought that he has that I, I really think is nice when your mind feels that way to inspire ourselves this way is he says, dwell in the vibrantly warm thought that encourages spiritual growth in oneself and others. This is the mind, I think, that I would take into bodhicitta. What could be better than that? You know, and so this is one way I see, you know, one reflection I like to do to inspire myself to use these practices. So I would invite others to, you know, think of different parts of the sadhana and how they relate to the, you know, the four establishments of mindfulness and let them support each other because they're, they're so complementary.